Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ray Alvarez. Welcome to my editing video. We're going to be starting with the headshot editing of this gentleman right here that you see on screen. Whenever I'm shooting headshots, I always like to get a center shot, a side profile, and then the other side profile. And the reason I do this is because one, everybody has a side. Not everybody likes both of their side profiles. So we have to select one. So we shoot both. And then of course we get a center shot just because some people love this look right here. Everybody's different. Everybody's going to have a preference. Whenever we're shooting headshots, as you can see in my previous videos, I set up and I set up a center shot. Then I move them to their side profiles. We start off with a simple straight face, as you see here on the screen, followed by a smirk, followed by a smile. Now, some people will smile, some people will not, no matter what you say. If they don't want to smile, don't force it. It's okay, they just, they're just they self-conscious, they don't like their smile, or they just don't want to smile. And that's totally fine, you can work with that. So in this case, I was looking at the pictures before, and I like this one. I really like this photo. And I'm actually gonna show you something here. So in this photo, we have the left side and the right side. While we were shooting, he displayed preference for the one on the right. I did too. I think it's a more realistic and genuine smile compared to the one on the left. So we're gonna go with the one on the right. Moving forward, we're gonna go into develop mode. This is a portrait. We have to crop this into a headshot. I get it to right about there, right around this area here, the bottom of the crop, and right around there. So your rule of thirds should be on his right or left eye, right over here. Now, keep in mind that they most likely will be posting this on LinkedIn or Facebook or any social media of their choice. Leave some wiggle room for them to highlight a circle around their face and upper neck region, just like this. If they decide to crop it in a little bit more or maybe you do after post, feel free to do so. But for now, this is a good headshot crop. We're gonna do some color grading right now. We're going to adjust some sliders. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down just a tad bit so that way the highlight on his nose and forehead don't show as much. Up the shadows just a slight bit. Now, the background seems a little bit too warm for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cool it off a little bit with the temperature, I'm gonna bring it right to the left. It's gonna look a little cooler now, and that's okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the saturation of the blues. Now, if you've noticed, his jacket color did change a slight bit. But what I'll do is, just for the sake of the video, bring this up a little higher. Because I can still modify the blues in the back in Photoshop. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work here with this photo, with this headshot, in Lightroom first. We're gonna make some modifications we're going to edit some stuff, and then after that, we're going to transfer over to Photoshop, remove some blemishes, edit the face a little bit more, and then bring it back to Lightroom to export it. So moving forward, we're going to brighten it up just a tad bit and move those highlights a tad bit down, add some contrast. I think this is good enough. I'm ready for Photoshop now, so let's bring it over. All right, guys, we're in Photoshop now. This is where most of the magic will happen. So first thing I do, you don't have to do it this way, but this is what I do. I duplicate that layer and I create a working layer. You never know what can happen during editing. So always have a backup. And since this is my working layer, I'm just gonna label it green. You don't have to label it green. You can make it any color you like. Just know that this is my working layer. So that's all it's letting us know. Also, while you're working, always save your work. It's very important. Three minutes later, five minutes later, always save your work. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the spot healing brush. And what that's going to do, it's going to help me in removing blemishes, dirt, lint, anything that I don't want. We're going to start off with this suit jacket. I'm going to raise this up just a tad bit in size. The harness does not to be that hard. So we're going to bring that down and I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're working with here. And we're going to get rid of literally every speck of dust or lint that you see that you don't want in the photo. Start by doing that. 
One of the things I pride myself on is creating a clean image. I don't want to see anything. I want to make sure that it looks nice, full of quality. Any imperfections are gone. Making sure that everything is cleaned up very nicely. And you're going to see the difference. And when you edit that way, you'll be proud of yourself. You really, really will. Sometimes I tend to overdo it and that's okay sometimes. It also depends on the kind of time you have. Ain't nobody got time for that. If you want to spend a lot of time in your headshot, then feel free to do so. But I typically like to spend at least anywhere from five to 10 minutes per headshot, sometimes less. But for the sake of the video, I just wanna make sure that I show you guys my whole process. And if we have to take a little bit of more time to do, to do so, then we will. So as you can see so far, we've, we've removed a lot of lint and messy little areas that you'll catch technically if you're looking at the photo. Now we're gonna zoom out real quick. That's great. And check this, I'm gonna to go to the backup and you're gonna remove the opacity of the layer and you can already see the difference of how clean it looks compared to what it was before. We're gonna move forward, doing that on his white shirt. We're gonna look for any imperfections. This spot right here is a little tricky. I'm not sure how I feel about this. So I'm gonna grab the patch tool and I'm gonna see if maybe we can quickly just fix that by doing that. You grab the, the area in question and you drag it over to an area that looks similar to it. And that looks way better than what it did a few minutes ago. So we're gonna show you the difference. That compared to that, much better, much, much better. We're gonna keep going. Um, since we're already here, I'm gonna do some areas of his neck. Now, I think this is where I'm overdoing it a little bit. Um, we really won't see this area. Nobody's really gonna care, but why not? So, edit to your liking. This area is completely blurred, so we really won't see much, but why not get the small areas that do stand out? We'll work on the backdrop later. All right, so far, so good. So next step will be the teeth. We're gonna create a new layer, and that layer is just gonna be the selection. Now, I know that you can mask. Some people like to mask, and that is completely fine. But I do it this way. So I'm using my brush tool to simply color in some white on the areas in question, the areas I wanna work on. Now, I need the opacity to be some, somewhat strong, but not all the way strong. All I need you to do is select the areas that look kind of tinted yellow or colors that you don't want to see. Now, if you notice here, there's somewhat of a gradient here. Let's lower down the size of the brush so that way it doesn't spill onto the lips because if the lips are somewhat yellow or, the, or Photoshop picks up any yellow areas of the lips, then it will change that color when we're modifying it. So let's make sure not to do that. And I think that's pretty much it right there. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the visibility of this layer, select that selection, go down here and hit selective color. You're going to play with the sliders for the yellow and red options, and you're going to lower down that yellowing. Make sure to make it look realistic. Don't do too much because if not, it will look fake. You do not want that. So in this case, I'll keep it there. Don't want anything red or pink, so we're gonna leave this right in the middle. And I'm gonna go this way with that. Let's go to the reds. Let's start, start off with the yellows. Raise it up just a tad bit. Maybe get rid of the magenta, just a little bit. The sign is what's really gonna help us out here. So we're gonna go this way. Let's try to see if we can brighten them up a little bit. And that should be okay there. Now, this is clear to us. We can see this very well. But remember, no one's going to see the headshot this close and personal. We're gonna zoom out just to make sure it looks okay. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna lower the opacity of this correction because this is too white. Yes, people have teeth like this, but it's not real, it's not realistic. So we're gonna lower it just a little bit to make it look more like him. So if you see the difference, remove, on, off, on, off. That's much better. 
in my opinion. In several cases, depending on the shadows and lighting, you might want to create a new layer. The opacity should be at overlay. And what that's going to do is going to brighten up the teeth. I'm not going to leave it for this photo. I just want to show you how to do it. So for the opacity, the strength of this brush, I'm gonna use your brush tool with white. I want it to be somewhere in the 40s, not too strong not too light brighten up the teeth in this case I'm not going to keep that but I just wanted to show you what you can do to a photo if you wanted to brighten up the teeth so you can always play with it lower it make it higher we're not keeping that we're deleting it going back to the layer save your work guys control save or file save so since we're already here, we're gonna get started with the face. Whenever it comes to a headshot, I wanna let you guys know that we don't remove things that belong to the individual. For example, beauty marks, any imperfections like scars that they would like for you to keep. During your session with them, while you're shooting them, just make sure to ask them, hey, I noticed this scar on your face. Would you like me to edit, edit that out? Or would you like me to keep it? And they'll tell you, they'll tell you honestly. So in situations like this, for example, his eyebrows, that strand of hair right there, I'll modify that out. You know, these things, no one cares. No one's ever gonna say, hey, you don't look like yourself because you don't have that on your eyebrows. No one's looking for that, right? He did admit that he didn't shave that morning. <laughs> and I think it looks okay. Uh, we're just gonna get rid of a few little areas that need a little bit of a shaving per se. <laughs> and that's all right. But we're gonna go ahead and remove certain areas that just stand out. Just removing little imperfections, little pieces of hair or anything on the face that just stands out to you personally that you want to remove. Going back to not changing the individual for who they are, questionable on the mustache. The mustache needs to stay. However, I'm gonna get rid of the white only because it's not majority of the photo. So I wanna make sure that, you know, his mustache looks a little darker. So I'm gonna help him out. I'm not really changing who he is. I'm not changing the kind of person he will look like if you was to meet him tomorrow. These things don't stand out. Now, if I was to change his, the complete color of his teeth, if I was to change and get rid of all the wrinkles on his face, for sure, <laughs> you won't recognize this man the minute you go to meet him. But we're gonna work with him. We're gonna actually edit out the things that need to be edited out. And so far we're doing fantastic. This is literally the process that I take to edit out headshots. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back, before, after. You can already tell a major difference. Look at this. Wow. All right. We're gonna go to the forehead region. I'll back out a little bit, get rid of some of these wrinkles here, which are light, they're not heavy, they're not too much. I'm not doing too much, I'm just blessing him with some aging. Or in this case, anti-aging. <laughs> And trust me, people do appreciate that. But when you do too much, they notice that and they don't want that. People want to look like themselves, especially for headshots. Headshots represent you and who you are as a person. So we're in the hair region here. Again, these are just things that people don't care about. People will not notice. This gentleman was great. He was a good person to, to uh, photograph. I enjoyed capturing his headshot. These little pieces right here, I'm not going to modify just because that's him. I do notice there's a scar here and I never did get to ask, but I think that in my best judgment, I'm going to leave that right there. And just notice that we're still using a spot healing brush. We haven't moved on to any other tools. The spot healing brush does most of it for us. We don't have a lot to worry about. You might ask me, what am I gonna do about these wrinkles? Honestly, it's on a per case basis. Um, we're gonna play around with it a little bit, see what we get. If it changes him too much, I might just leave them. I really don't want to alter his, his image or who he is as a person, all right? So what we're going to do is since this working layer is very good, 
we're going to create a secondary one so that way we can work with the wrinkles all right just in case we mess up that way we have a backup of our working there now save your work guys just a reminder before we work on that layer we're going to go here into the eyeball this is something that i typically judge on a per case basis as well some people have more of these red veins in their eyes and some don't i try my best not to remove all of them but i kind of like to like to clear the eye out as you can see in this photo i help out as much as i can because if it stands out too much you don't want your red eyes to pop up so much in the photo So we'll just fix it a little bit enough that you don't see red lines popping up all over the place i think we should be good there typically on people's eyes what i do is i brighten the iris as you can see there's a little bit of brown there if i was to brighten this up you're going to brighten the reflector up. And if you do brighten that up, it's gonna to look too bright and it's gonna to look too fake. So I might not do it in this case, only because he does have very dark eyes. So I might just leave it, but I might brighten the entire eye. So I'm gonna get my brush tool here in white, and I'm gonna use about this size. And I'm gonna go to a light touch of 20 or 17. And I'm gonna fill it in, right? Just brush one stroke. I'm going to go here to the normal, the opacity, select overlay, and that has brightened it just a tad bit, enough to where the eye doesn't look fake, like this. I'm going to duplicate it twice. That's crazy. Don't do that. So this looks good. Doesn't look too bad. I might even just lower it just a little bit. Let's go back to the wrinkles, which was the whole point. <laughs> so in this case, Whenever you're working with wrinkles, keep in mind, you don't want it to be fake, but you also don't want to remove areas like this. This this is realistic here. If you start in this area here, you might get away with some stuff. But if you start changing this around, you're just messing with the person's character. So we'll start off with the spot healing brush and see what we can do. We might lose this guy right here and this guy right here, and that's okay. You could even use a patch tool to kind of like move it out right like that we've just tremendously lessened his wrinkles here on this area with those few strokes that we just did back to the spot healing brush tool and then when you see that it does stuff like this yeah just undo that don't don't go with that that's not realistic and there's other ways to do this. There's so many other ways to do this kind of work. This is just what I do as a quick fix. This is my process. It works for me. Uh, we're almost there actually. So I kind of like where we're going with this. I'm just going to modify that little area right there. Zoom out. This area has lessened that we just need to kind of like blur this in a little bit because it just stops right there. So I don't want it to be so abrupt. What we're going to do is just kind of use a healing brush tool this time. I'm going to clone this area here and kind of like blur it out just a tad bit, not too much. Same thing here, kind of clone that there. Go back to the spot healing brush and work on those little last wrinkles there. They're so almost invisible that you just might as well get rid of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the dodge and burn tool. And we're going to dodge it a bit. And this is going to lighten up those dark areas that we just modified. And we're going to go to highlights, go back to the wrinkles layer. Oops, that's too much. We're going to lower this down to about nine, 9%, 10%. One stroke, one stroke, one stroke. We're going to go into shadows. I'm going to lower this a little bit more to power the exposure here. 
two strokes, two strokes, zoom in a little bit, lower my brush size. One stroke there and one stroke there. I think that's okay for now. We're gonna zoom out one more time. Make that one invisible. This is the backup and before, I'm sorry, after, before. After, before, look at that. Great, great headshot so far, clean. All right. So now I'm just visually inspecting this photo to see if there's anything else I'm missing. And I can't see anything right now. Looking at this area, that area, just to see. Little other imperfections. I mean, if you really wanted to be a little picky here, what we would do is go back to the spot healing brush tool, make it a little bigger, and get rid of that section right there, just so it's level. Other than that, this right here is a good headshot. It's clean, it's good. We did exactly what we needed to do without doing too much. We're gonna go back to Lightroom. We're gonna save our work and go back to Lightroom, guys. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're in Lightroom. We're back. Here we go. This is the edited file on Lightroom that we just transferred over from Photoshop. Now, last but not least, you don't have to do this, but it's an additional part of the process that I like to do sometimes. This backdrop, I want to darken it just a tad bit so he pops out a little bit more. Lightroom has this really cool feature. You're going to go here and you're going to select mask and you're going to go with background. It's going to detect, detect the background. And now we're going to go to the exposure and lower it just a little bit. Not too much because you will start to see the difference in the edit and it's going to stand out and it's going to look nasty. But if you go down just a tad bit, Look at that. If you look around the edges, you only see something here. But other than that, it's a clean cut. It's a clean look. It's a little darker. He stands out way more. We're gonna apply that. And we're gonna just lift the exposure just a little bit more. Lower some highlights just a tad bit more. And guys, that compared to this. Wow, what a difference. This headshot here to your left looks perfect. So guys, there you have it. You have your headshot edited in Lightroom, in Photoshop, the Ray Alvarez way. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Start taking some headshots, practice this, practice more, and see how it works for your process, for your workflow.